Oh, yes. Welcome back once again, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review for the brand new Netflix Transformers War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. Optimus is a redeco of the Earthrise Optimus Prime toy and is part of the second Voyager wave in Netflix's War for Cybertron series. And he comes accompanied by two new Battlemasters. So if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're gonna take a look at the toys packaging. We'll open it up, we'll see the instructions, and then we'll see the toys themselves in their vehicle modes, weapon modes, robot modes, all the different modes. We'll be doing some comparisons and group shots today, and then at the end of the video, I'll get my final thoughts. So the toys come in the same type of Voyager packaging that the previous wave did. It's a bit, you know, bigger than your normal Voyager packaging because it has extra figures in it. This new Optimus is done up in noticeably darker colors than the regular Earthrise version in hues that really lean more toward the Generation 1 Optimus Prime toy, especially with that really dark blue. And then our Battlemasters here are mostly done in solid and clear yellow plastic with a little bit of paint on them. I don't know why my Optimus Prime's head is turned to the side like that, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. And on this side, you get this mostly, I don't want to say monotone, but very color washed artwork of Optimus. Then on the back, you get the renders of the toys. You get Optimus Prime in noticeably lighter colors in his renders. In the vehicle and robot modes, he takes 31 steps to transform. And then you get our new Axe Battlemaster, who is now named Enter Axe. Admittedly, not my favorite name. And then our sound barrier recolor is now named Shieldron, or Shieldron. Shieldron? I don't know. Equally not great name, <laughs> I won't lie. These aren't the most creative. It's Axe and Shield guy. Okay. <laughs> but they take uh, five and four steps to transform, respectively. And if you weren't already sure, this Enerax guy is supposed to be kind of a Battlemaster stand into Optimus Prime's Energy Axe. Which is really interesting because it's very much in the same vein as the uh, Transformers Prime Arms Micron toys from Japan. Where instead of getting regular weapons like the Hasbro versions, they had little transforming partners that became something very close to their actual weapon. So this is kind of a neat callback to that. Uh, the shield thing, it might be a call out to the Siege Optimus Prime shield component, not sure. But being a read echo of Sound Barrier, he is of course airlock compatible, so you got one more Autobot Battlemaster to add to your base, which is always awesome. And then over here on the side, you have um, Sin City X Transformers, basically. It's a really neat bit of artwork, I love how they just kind of did this real line art version of it, just added the red for effect, because, you know, Netflix and all that. So overall, packaging is really neat, but we're not here for the packaging. Let's go ahead and open these up. Okay, here's our instruction book for our three pack. You get Optimus Prime, Enerax, Shieldron, Dwarf Cybertron Trilogy logo, all that. You open this up, it's very thin. Wow, it's like thinner than normal instructions. It's almost like tissue paper. Not a good sign. I think they're getting even cheaper with these. Okay, so over here on the side, you just get the little kind of how-to for Optimus's matrix and his weapon storage, all that. Then you get the transformation from robot to vehicle. Continues around on back here and takes up this whole like top section. That shows you how to get to the vehicle mode. And then down here, you get your transformation for Enerax into its axe mode, as well as shield drawn into its ramp or shield mode. And then just shows you how to make them hold on to those things. Now one thing it doesn't show you is how to store the Battlemasters on Optimus's vehicle mode, or even if you can. So we're going to take a look at that here. Okay, so here's the vehicle mode and my best stab at some sort of storage for the Battlemasters. You can see it's a little, little unwieldy looking, but I have Shieldron just hanging off the side, Enerax just kind of folded over on the back like this. Um, neither one of these guys really lends themselves well to attaching to Optimus or storing on him because they weren't molded for him, right? They're completely separate toys, all three of them, and then they're just kind of thrown together here. So you're going to have some compatibility issues. Uh, Enerax specifically, just because of the way it's molded, not a lot of clearance for like this little post here. 
um, really can't store long optimus very well at all. Shieldron's a little better because he's more flat, but uh, again, the only place he really fits is along the sides here. So you just kind of have to make do with what they give you. But you know, this is relatively compact and having Enerax off the back here is kind of reminiscent of the, um, what do you call it? The Siege Optimus Prime, how he stores his like axe and shield on the back. So yeah, it's the best you can do, I guess. Or I guess you could have Enerax like coming out the side here, but now he's like sticking way out there, so I wouldn't do it. Now, obviously, if you want to attach a trailer to Optimus, then this isn't going to work. So, you know, make do. Now, as far as Optimus' vehicle mode, pretty nice looking overall. Very, very nice silver paint on it. I think it's a little, little bit shinier than the regular Earthrise Optimus. You can see the windshields are no longer done in a clear blue color. The clear plastic is just clear and maybe has like a greenish yellowish tint to it though that might just be the paint underneath the like metal part underneath or faux metal you can see it around here on the side uh, hubcaps are still nice and painted so that's great and overall very very nice looking everything holds together mostly well i do have an issue with one of these sides I forget which one it is let's see it doesn't really want to stay plugged in i think it's this one yeah it kind of pops out a little bit. Now you can kind of hold it in place for a moment and it'll stay if you don't mess with it too much. So the tolerances are mostly good. Uh, you might notice there's like a little spot here in the windshield. So there unfortunately seems to be a little bit of missing paint or something underneath. And so you can't really do anything about it because it's like locked in there. So I'm unfortunately gonna have this annoying little dot on my Optimus now, which not ideal. And here's a comparison with the Earthrise Optimus Prime. And from the front, the most immediate difference is obviously the blue windshields. You'll also notice that his upper grill section is painted like a somewhat darker silver than the rest of the grill. On the new Optimus, it's just left unpainted, which is a shame. Definitely missing some paint apps. They still haven't bothered to paint the little headlights up top. They didn't do that for either version. Should be yellow or you know something close to it. And then when you look at the sides, the other big thing you notice is that the blues are pretty radically different. The Earthrise Optimus leans for a more cartoon-inspired, lighter blue color. And, yeah, that's kind of the color that's gone on to be more prominent with G1 Optimus, just kind of a, a flat, clean blue. The blues of this new toy are actually much closer to those of the original Optimus Prime. And I kind of have a feeling that's what they're going with here, is to kind of hew him closer to the original toy between the deeper blue and the just plain like clear windshield. I think that's what they were going for. Here's a quick look at all three of the currently available versions of the Earthrise mold. From left to right, you get Earthrise, Netflix, and the alternate universe Optimus Prime, also known as Sleep Mode or Dead Optimus Prime. And the shots highlight just what a really nice little figure this is. The amount of detail on these things is just impressive every time I mess with them. And here's a look at Optimus with the Earthrise trailer attached, because naturally, being a Reed Echo, he can use this. And it works just fine. The wheels don't really want to touch. It's weird. They're kind of touching. But yeah, I mean, he's fully compatible with the regular trailer. If you want to attach that to him, if you just, I don't know, prefer the look of this toy over the other one, you want to borrow the trailer from the other, you can certainly do that. Um, colors on this might be a little bright compared to this guy's kind of more muted shades but overall looks pretty good and is very reminiscent of the original toy so yeah something you can do now it's time to take a good look at our two battle masters again they are enerax and shieldron these guys are both molded in the same exact plastic colors both the solid yellow and clear yellow and they both have some level of paint on them Shieldron has the most by far. He's got most of his torso, his pelvic region, and his helmet painted silver. And then just a straight black face. Uh, it's a shame they couldn't paint his eyes in. And then Enerax, I thought at first Enerax didn't have any paint on it, but when you look very closely, it actually does have silver on the eyes and the uh, head crests here. 
That's it though, and they're very hard to see. I was actually convinced this thing was completely unpainted. Um, I think they could have done more paint on this guy. It makes him look very unfinished. He actually reminds me very much of an Arms Micron, just plain plastic little snap together kit. And even though this guy comes assembled, I mean, he could easily have been a snap together kit because you can take this guy apart very easily. So, not the most impressive looking Battle Masters, that's for sure. Especially when you compare them with their mold mates. Here we have Enerax grouped up with Terraxodon and Terror Daxtal. Because Hasbro has just chosen to die on a hill with these axe puns. I mean, they're just like, yep, every one of them, axe in the name. Super creative. But you can see these guys just have a, you know, somewhat more interesting color scheme. I think Terror Daxtal has the best by far. He's got a mix of green and black plastics. He's got this really nice metallic blue paint on the wings, but then he goes for a red paint on the head crest and the eyes. Whereas Terror Daxtal, uh, he's a little more plain. He gets like a dark gray or blackish paint on the wings. Um, same color for the head crest and then a very light blue that you can barely see for the eyes. So they're much less plain looking. Um, you know, I, I don't know. They seem to really just be backing off when it comes to the paint here with these guys. Which, it's it's a little concerning. It kind of harkens back to the old Transformers Universe uh, multi-packs you would find that were usually like store exclusives. They're like very sloppily or barely painted, like kind of an afterthought. And they're just kind of thrown together and like, here you go. Here's some characters we made up. They don't look as good as the original toys, but there you go. They're discounted. Buy them. And I just kind of hope we're not moving back towards that because those multi-packs always felt very cheap, felt very like uh, kind of very discount chain-like. In fact, some of them I think were sent to discount chains specifically. So I, I don't want to see that drop in quality where these feel very miscellaneous and not like very deliberate characters. We'll see. Maybe I'm just doom saying for nothing. And then here we get shield drawn along with his mold mate. And this is Sound Barrier. And just like Pterodactyl, he's just got a better paint job overall. He uses less paint on the torso and head regions, but then he gets all this, this nice silver striping on the backside. So, you know, again, f he just feels better. <laughs> feels more thought out with the color layout. But Shield Run overall, he's not, he's not the worst thing. He at least has some decent amount of paint on him. Okay, transforming these guys is very simple. For Enerax, you just fold the feet up, fold the head down, flip the handle down, and bring the wings in, make an ax. Old Shieldron, right here, put his feet together, flip his back panel down. You're gonna plug the backs of his heels into that, and then plug his wrists in this middle little hinge area here. And now if you're just putting him in a ramp mode, you would leave it at that. It's very nice looking. I like the way that comes out. Uh, you know, just leave it like that. But if you want him to be a shield, which is definitely the intention here, you just flip this little post out on his chest. And that's that. And they do color match pretty well. I honestly wish they had just done all of Enerax's body in the clear plastic. Would have looked a lot better. But, oh well. He would match better. Man, that, that's really nice looking. It's got this nice amber quality to it. Looks really good in hand. So, yeah, those are their weapon modes. Here's another comparison with the other versions of the Terraxodon mode. And you might notice something. <laughs> you might notice that one of these things is not like the other. Unfortunately, neither Enerax or Shieldron come with the blast effects that are part of their respective molds. And this is a pretty big downgrade. Now, normally, I'd make the argument of like, oh, well... You know, they had to cut those because you're getting $12 worth of Battle Masters for an additional, you know, 10. It's got to come out somewhere. Except the two previous Voyagers from the first wave, they both had two Battle Masters, and all the Battle Masters had their blast effects intact. So, not really an excuse. Uh, I, I don't know why they went this route. $30 for just the Optimus cab is already a little bit of a stretch to make him his own Voyager. And then when, you know, 
they start taking away the blast effects. It's like, but why though? <laughs> like, why, why would you do this? And I gotta say though, I generally lean toward, you know, the idea of a, a freer market and all that. You don't always have to make all the money, right? <laughs> like, quality does beat squeezing pennies when it comes to the longevity of your toy line. Because eventually people just get kind of get tired of cutting corners and it'll come out in the long run where you make less money because people don't want to buy, you know, less for more. So again, I hope it's not a sign of things to come in general, but I, I can't believe they didn't include the blast effects, you know? Here's Shield Drawn and Soundbear again. And like I already mentioned, no blast effect for Shield Drawn. Feels real, real sleazy, real cheap. I don't like it. But that's my personal gripe. It's not a deal breaker by any means. It's still a great set, but you know, it, it, it rubs me the wrong way. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna look at Optimus in his robot mode next. If you wanna see the transformation for that, I already covered it on the Earthrise Optimus Prime review. So be sure to check that out if you need to see the transformation step-by-step. Okay, here's the robot mode for Optimus. And no real surprises here for the most part. You know, you already could tell his color scheme from the truck mode, but some things that become a little more obvious. There were some plastic color changes here that did manage to get rid of half of the gray on the inner legs. But the trade-off is that his hip, shoulder, and elbow joints, they're all cast in dark blue now, which really... It's not the worst thing. It's not incredibly noticeable, but it, it is a little off for him to have blue in those places. So that's kind of your trade-off is you get more fully blue lower legs, but you're also going to get that same color in some other places you may not want it. Another thing really worth pointing out is the fact that his eyes, while still blue like the Earthrise toy, are painted in a much, much lighter shade of blue which is good because one issue with the Earthrise toy is that his eyes are kind of hard to make out from the rest of his face because both of these guys went with the G1 toy approach of having his upper face be blue like his helmet rather than silver like his faceplate. Now, originally this wouldn't have been an issue because the original coloration for Earthrise Optimus was to give him yellow eyes like the original toy. It would have worked out. However, last minute they opted to change it to blue to be more cartoon accurate, but they didn't update the upper face to match, so, you know, it didn't really pan out. Now, I would have preferred if they made this toy's eyes yellow, since his overall coloration is closer to the Generation 1 toy, it just would have matched better. But if they stuck with the blue, at least they made it much more noticeable against the backdrop of his face. So I gotta give him props for that. As far as tolerances go, this guy is still very solid. It doesn't have any floppiness or looseness. Everything feels just like it does on the other two versions. Uh, open his chest up. You can see the matrix. Same old matrix chamber. There's one bit of a downgrade here that I'm not fond of. So since they altered the transparent plastic color for the windows and everything, well, it's the same plastic used for the Matrix, which means the inner core of the Matrix is now just that same very plain color instead of that nice blue. So it does hurt it a little bit because the Matrix, it's always depicted as blue in the middle. But kind of minor nitpick. Still goes in there just fine. You know, it's just a, I would prefer a blue Matrix. But then, of course, that means the windshield would sell to be blue. The light blue really wouldn't have worked as well with this color scheme. Okay, here's the other two Optimuses for another comparison. And like I mentioned, this guy's eyes just, they don't show up as well. You gotta get a lot closer just to see him. So yeah, definitely an improvement there. The dead Optimus, well, his eyes are supposed to be black and lifeless, so they're not really supposed to stand out. And again, three very solid toys. This one's obviously much more niche. Not as many people are gonna want a dead Optimus Prime, especially kids. It's really just a shout out for us older folks that really like the uh, 1986 movie. And let's get a look at their matrices compared to each other. Open them up. Now, one thing you might notice 
the dead Optimus, despite being dead, has a very vibrant looking matrix compared to this new one. And that's because even though he opts for, you know, the kind of more plain transparent windows and plastic, they actually went and painted the core of his matrix. So that did stand out. It actually even stands out more than this guy's just clear blue one. So there's really no reason they couldn't have painted this Optimus Prime's, you know, that blue color. Even if they just used the same blue they used for his eyes, it still would have been better than just kind of the smoky clear color. So again, there is no definitively better version of this toy because they all, in my opinion, have some pros and cons. But they all also are solid enough on their own to where I could be happy with any one of these. All right, now, this set is not a three pack for nothing, so let's go ahead and arm Optimus up with his two battle masters. So as far as his ion blaster, just like, you know, the other versions of this, you can fold it up, store it on his back, like so, kind of imitating the way that in the cartoon he would just kind of reach behind him and pull it out of nowhere. All right, let's go ahead, we'll put Interax here. Doesn't go in that well, honestly. A um, hmm. little loose for his grip. Honestly, the best place to have him hold it is toward the bottom of the handle there, where it's the thickest. Yeah, and these weren't made for him, so it's a little iffy. And then old shield run. Let's go ahead, plug it into his forearm. Here we go. Now he is armed. Now, Anorax is obviously supposed to be, you know, an indirect reference to Optimus Prime's Energon Axe that he wields in the cartoon and, you know, some other media. The shield thing, I think, is just there to complement the melee weapon that is the axe. Oh, that got messed up. Oops. And doesn't hold it very well. <laughs> very loose. So, yeah, the shield... I don't know if it's just incidental or if it's supposed to be a reference to the Siege Prime's shield slash axe weapon, or even the Earthrise Optimus with the shield that comes as part of his trailer. I will say though, he does look really cool wielding these. This toy's got a lot of character. The way his eyes seem to just glow against the backdrop of his face. This is neat. He looks very menacing, very powerful. And for a little parallel, here is the Earthrise Prime wielding the shield from his trailer and his axe, which is part of the Centurion Drone accessory pack. So you can kind of see what they were going for with this. Now, obviously, there's quite a few differences. The classic axe just extends out from Optimus's wrist, whereas this is more of a handheld weapon. But, you know, it achieves the same overall effect. So... Yeah, there you have it. This is our total package for the new Optimus Prime 3-pack with Enerax and Shieldron. And this guy, overall, I think it's a really, it's a good value for what you get. I'm still perturbed about the loss of the blast effects, but I still think, even without those, between the Optimus and the two Battlemasters, the right color coordination between his two weapons there, it, it's a fair enough deal. 40 bucks is not bad. At least for today's market, right? I wouldn't have dreamed paying $40 for this 10 years ago. Again, as far as which one of, you know, these Optimus Primes is better, between him or the standard version, it's, it's pretty up in the air. Uh, each one does things that I like. Each one, I think, falls short in certain places. Overall, I think I kind of lean toward the color scheme of this Netflix version a little more. Not only does it just fit the Netflix theme a lot better of having these kind of darker, less vibrant tones, uh, it really does harken back to the original toy. And if you've been watching me for any length of time, you know that I generally lean toward the G1 toy accuracy over the cartoon accuracy. Generally, there are exceptions. As cool as his eyes look, I would have loved it if they were yellow. They really would have matched his weapons and everything too. And I think this guy is a good substitute if you don't want to drop $50 for the version with the trailer. Which is still available right now. You know, it's still got Earthrise ones on the shelves. It's going to be re-released in Kingdom. Now, of course, $40 isn't much cheaper than 50 
but at least you are getting some extra accessories to help pad it out. Because, I mean, honestly, a trailer, while, you know, something that a longtime collector is going to want to be accurate to the original, it's not the most exciting thing, right? It's a box with wheels, unfolds. It's, it's not as cool as getting transformable weapons, in my opinion. I don't know. So, yeah, uh, whether or not you should pick this guy up really depends on your priorities and what you already have. If you already have Earthrise Optimus, this is by no means a must-have. I mean, they're close enough to where it doesn't really matter. It's kind of like the difference between classic Starscream and the Universe Recolor. It's just slightly different color schemes. Uh, if you don't already have Earthrise Optimus, this guy's a pretty good deal. Definitely save some space on your shelf because you don't have the giant box hanging around. And again, if you're more attracted to those just more classic 1984 colors, maybe you prefer this. So overall, I do highly recommend this toy. Now, of course, that is just how I feel. Now, what I really want to know is what you guys think of this new Netflix Optimus Prime. Do you think he is better than, worse than the Earthrise version? Would you rather pick this up than go 50 bucks for the leader? Do you think you're getting a better value, a lesser value? Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comments section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the brand new Netflix War for Cybertron Optimus Prime. And with that said, I will see you next time.